Welcome everyone. We're here in our final week together in CS 111. I have uh, some some small but but very colorful colorful uh, birds for you today. Various hummingbirds. So this one here, apparently at one time was called the Magnificent Hummingbird, but was renamed to the Talamanca Hummingbird. Uh, we also have the purple-throated mountain gem hummingbird, mm. but this is a female purple-throated mountain gem hummingbird, and so it does not have the purple throat. But nonetheless, that is what kind of hummingbird it is. Uh, this is the rufous-tailed hummingbird. Personally, there's some red on the tail somewhere, not, not visible in this picture. Uh, black-bellied hummingbird, which also has a black head and a black tail, um, but name, name for the belly. Uh, and this is a violet saber wing uh, hummingbird. You can see the kind of sword shape uh, that the wing has. You might also call these violent saber wing hummingbirds. They will aggressively chase other hummingbirds away from their, their territory. Hummingbirds, you see a, a crowd of them outside a feeder or something, you'll see some of them will be like diving after the others in uh, aerobatic uh, uh, duels. Uh, this is a, another angle on the, the violet saber wing, and of course, these are very fast birds, so if you don't have your camera uh, shutter speed adjusted correctly, you get, you get a picture like this. And the last couple I have are both uh, green-crowned, brilliant hummingbirds. Yes, brilliant is part of, part of the name of the bird, uh, a female and a male as well. That's the birds for today. Uh, what questions do you have about uh, sorting, final project, uh, anything we've we've been working on? Cole? For the final project, um, can we start working on it before we get the proposal back? Uh, yes, I, I should have feedback on the proposals back by tonight, but yes. Um, I don't need, don't need to wait for that. Uh, I think in, it, it's very likely that if I have feedback other than like, sounds like a good project, it will be um, uh, typically of considered doing the simpler version uh, or, or saying like this part of what you proposed, I expect will be particularly hard, so maybe you plan to, to leave that for last. Um, and of course, if you have, uh, if your proposal has, has uh, questions for me or, or things you're not sure about how to do, um, office hours or, or email are a good way for that. Also, uh, I think both today and Wednesday we'll have uh, some extra time, which uh, we'll use for, for project work time. Uh, so you'll have a chance to work with your uh, partner here and Dominic and I will be available to uh, to answer questions. Um, other questions to get us started? All right. So as a break from the the highly kind of theoretical uh, side of things we've been looking at with sorting and big O analysis today. Uh, it's going to be uh, just a grab bag of useful things we can do in Python. Uh, these aren't uh, kind of big computer science ideas, but these are going to be, I think, a number of just like nice, useful features that Python provides as a programming language. Uh, but before we get to that, one last bit of practice uh, with what we've been what we've been working on. Uh, we will take a look at a couple questions about our uh, worst case big O analysis. So first, uh, what is what does worst case mean? All right, excellent. Worst case does mean what is the maximum amount of work, maximum number of steps uh, that we can take uh, when performing some algorithm. And as a practical application, if we have a procedure that takes n cubed plus 100 times n plus 1,200 steps, what would we say is the big O running time? If we, we want to 
narrow focus to this kind of um, theoretical analysis, how would we how would we express that? All right, please discuss with your your neighbors why you think it's the particular big O expression you chose. And uh, movement towards C, which is indeed what uh, what our big O will be in this case. Uh, can someone share how how you were th uh, thought about turning this uh, expression for the, the number of steps into our into our big O? Yeah. I think you just take the largest factor. Exactly. We want to narrow our focus to just the largest factor. It will be just this n cubed, uh, because we might be misled by thinking, well, if n is something like 10, then n cubed and 100 times n are the same. Uh, and um, 1,200 is bigger than, than both of them. Uh, but we really care more about situations where n is something like a billion, where n is 10 to the ninth, 1 billion, n cubed, 10 to the 27th, 1 with 27 zeros, whereas 100n is 10 to the 11th, so like a billion... Uh, close to a billion, billion times smaller than n cubed, and 1,200 is, of course, far, far less than that. So it's our kind of intuition for why we care about the, the biggest factor. Questions on that? All right, on to the smorgasbord of useful Python stuff. So we're going to start out with what if we had a situation where I had an x uh, and a y coordinate, and I wanted to print uh, something like location colon 10 comma 4. So uh, if I print location uh, colon 10 uh, space parenthesis 10 comma 4 uh, this first attempt won't do exactly what I want because it will print uh, location and it will put spaces in between the different parts of what's being printed so that's not quite right uh, I, there's a way I can get print to do this where I say uh, I'll put the spaces in myself and I tell it the separation between the things you're printing should be the empty string rather than a space. Uh, I could also do it by concatenating strings together. So turn 10 into a string. Uh, when I say 10, what I actually mean is x. And 4 should be y. I turn x into a string. Turn y into a string. And uh, build it up that way. But all of these are sort of clunky. Um, and a nice solution here is... Uh, what Python calls a format string, a way to, uh, uh, our general idea is that we provide uh, a string uh, with blanks, which will ha show using uh, curly braces, uh, and then values to fill in uh, the blanks. So, uh, we could say print location colon parentheses blank, comma blank, and then say dot format, and say fill in the first blank with x and the second blank with y. The recent versions of Python let us do something even more convenient than this, 
which is if we have an f in front of this string, this, uh, this tells Python uh, this is a special format string, and so I can include the values of the blanks directly inside the uh, curly braces. So using one of these f strings lets me kind of, and it wouldn't have to be just a variable, I could include kind of an arbitrary Python expression in here. So it could be y divided by 2 plus 5 <laughs> would do that math, and then the result would be what was filled in into that blank in the string. Questions on this so far? Mm -hmm. So this is letting us more conveniently sort of take variables or other values that we have and plug them into parts of strings. We can also use these format strings to, as the name suggests, control the format in which things are printed. So let's say I have a number of points and a total points. So it's supposed to be 19 out of 22. And if I print score and then points divided by total, save this. <coughs> so I can run it. I get this sort of annoying printout of uh, like a, a bunch of decimal places. And I could use the round function to round it. But if I say wanted to keep the full value or avoid using the round function and just control how it is displayed uh, uh, in, the, in the format string. So first I'll change this first print out to use a format string like this and then I could say all right in uh, print this points divided by total and then it, with a I can put a colon and then after the colon I can include information about how this value should be formatted uh, and you can look up uh, online and if there's a lot of different ways that you can specify the format. I'll go over a few here, but if you, uh, if you Google Python format <coughs> strings, you'll find information about all the different ways you can use these. Uh, but for example, I could say four decimal points and a floating point number. So I say 0.4 to say, show me, 0.4f is, display this as a floating point number, as a float, with four decimal places. Um, so it just kind of, uh, takes the same the same numerical values before and just controlling how I how I display it. Uh, I can say show it to me as a two decimal point percentage. So total divided by points. I want to see it as a percentage so that not only will it do the two decimal points, it will multiply it by a hundred to show this. Uh, uh, fraction to me as, as a percentage, so I see 86.36%. Uh, so this is all just kind of Python doing things in the background once I've told it what format to, to display this. <coughs> um, another neat thing is that uh, I can tell it to display a very long number uh, if I had uh, uh, a is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, uh, and I wanted this to, I wanted it to display A, and I wanted it to put commas kind of every three digits to make the number uh, easier to read, kind of nicely formats the numbers with the number with these, these commas in it. Um, the uh, something that has actually been used in uh, uh, lab one when when you ran the prisoners uh, uh, dilemma with um, 
uh, the, the logging turned on, so it would print out the information about what moves all the, uh, the different strategies were making in each of the 100 rounds that, that were played. Uh, uh, you may remember that it was kind of, it had this sort of table-like format. Uh, and that's also something that we can do with these format strings. So uh, I can tell it to print uh, the text uh, left aligned and to make the text uh, 30 characters wide but the part that's actually printed should be aligned to the left. Uh, whereas if I wanted to print text that was still took up 30 spaces, so I want, say, a column that is 30, uh, 30 characters wide, uh, I can control both whatever text you're printing, print it as uh, 30 characters wide, but align the actual text either to the left uh, or to the right. Hmm. Oh, did not put the F in front to make them format strings. So I have it printed this right aligned all the way to the right of the 30 spaces. So uh, with kind of multiple of these on the same line, you could print, okay, this value somewhere within these 12 spaces and then the next value within the next 12 spaces. So things, have, no matter how many characters each thing takes up, they're still uh, end up the same distance apart. Um, left aligned, right aligned, we can also do centered, and that's with uh, a caret, centered within 30 characters. Uh, and we can even tell it uh, by default it's filling these extra spaces, uh, these, these extra characters with spaces, but we can tell it to fill it with something else. We can tell it, say, uh, uh, fill it with an, an asterisk. And so it's centered, but then it fills in the others, uh, the kind of non, the spaces that weren't taken up by the string or formatting with the asterisk character in, instead of a space. Questions on, on any of this? Things you're wondering? Uh, and the last thing to make the point that we can have um, Kind of whatever expressions we want in these format strings, uh, we can have uh, inside these brackets uh, nums bracket zero is the first number, and nums bracket negative one is the last. So we can have whatever sort of Python we want inside these these curly braces, and then that will become part of our string. So format strings, uh, super useful. Uh, I'm sure they would have uh, uh, made the uh, gerrymandering uh, lab a little easier, getting the output uh, in the right format, having things automatically turned into percentages for you. Uh, and now you know. Any questions on the format before we move on to Next grab bag of Python features. Yeah. I have a question. Just it would be super handy to know how to like <clears throat> when you like hashtag a whole group of of lines at once. I just don't know the shortcut for that. Um so if I have some lines selected, uh I believe it's edit toggle line comment which it's showing me is apple slash, I think it's control slash on Windows. So if I hit apple slash, it comments all the selected lines. If I have commented that line selected and hit it again, it will toggle back and forth. Uh, if some of the lines are commented and some aren't, it will go to commenting them, at, them out. <coughs> 
yeah, VS Code has a has a lot of of uh, uh, nifty nifty features. One that I use all the time is uh, if I have some text selected uh, and I hit uh, on on Mac uh, Command D, that will select the next text that's the same. And I can just keep hitting that and keep selecting all the text, and now I have four different places in the file where I am editing. So uh, I can change them all um, at once to something else. Uh, and you can manually put uh, your cursor in multiple places holding Alt. Um, uh, right, it's Alt on Windows holding Command on Mac. And the shortcuts are not exactly the same between the two. Um, all right, so this uh, next feature is um, perhaps not quite as exciting as our as our format string, but can still be still be useful uh, if we have a sequence in Python, which it can be a list, can be a, a string. Uh, and we multiply that sequence by, a num by an integer, uh, it will actually create a new sequence that has the original one copied some number of times. So I can print uh, v and print v times 3. I'll see that I get the original, and then when I multiply it by 3, it creates a new list that has the original one just sort of copied out three times. Uh, probably more useful to uh, do this with strings, that if you have some string and you want a version that's that string sort of copy-pasted some number of times, s times 10 gives me hello, 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 hello. So if we want Python lists that when we multiply a number act like vectors and we multiply each element of the list by that number, that's when we want a NumPy array. When we have the default Python, the built-in Python lists, uh, we don't get scalar multiplication. We get copies of the of the original list. Questions on that? All right. So the next uh, feature is called uh, multiple. assignment and this also involves sequences um, so if again we have a list within a single assignment statement if the thing on the right is a sequence the thing on the left can have multiple variables and if those match the structure of the sequence then each variable will get a part of the sequence. So what I mean is if I say x comma y comma z equals nums, <coughs> this isn't something that uh, we've kind of thought about about doing in, in Python, and it's not a feature that I have seen in, in any other programming language. But this will take, assuming nums is a sequence that has three parts, the first part will be put in will be assigned x, the second part to y, the third part to z. So then we could print x, y, z and see that we assigned 0 to x, 2 to y, 4 to z. If nums had a structure that did not match x, y, z, it would give us too many values to unpack. So it was expecting there to be three things to pull out of the sequence, but the sequence had four, and so they, it didn't match, and it gives an error. If we put a comma after z, this is an indication that we just want the first three things in the sequence, no matter how many there are. It's okay if there are more. And so when we do it this way, apparently I was... I was mistaken. Still, still value error. So, comma does not let us get away with that. Though I do 
I have some some idea that there is a way to tell it to give you the first few elements and put the rest somewhere else, but uh, this will this will be enough for now. So pulling numbers out of a sequence uh, not the most uh, not the most uh, useful necessarily. So somewhat more useful is if we have a function and we want that function to return two different things. We can say return say x times 2 and x times 3. This function is actually just returning a tuple. The first element of the tuple is 2 times x, the next element is, is 3 times x, uh, but because a tuple is a sequence, we can use this multiple assignment to kind of pull things out of the tuple that is returned. So we would say a comma b equals f of 5, and then we get back 10 and 15 and because we returned a tuple and then in using the return value we put the first thing in the tuple into a the second thing into b this lets us have a function that returns multiple things and then we can call it and assign each of the return values uh, to a separate variable rather than having to do it uh, in several steps where maybe we would say a result equals f of 5 and then a equals result bracket 0 and b equals result bracket 1. We can do kind of all three of these in a, in a single line. Questions so far? So another situation where this comes up all the time is in working with dictionaries because dictionaries have all these key value pairs in them and we often want to write a loop for each key uh, value pair and uh, we might uh, think that we need to uh, let's say we had some dictionary D, and it has a key A, which is 1, B, which is 2, and C, which is 3. And we might say for uh, key in our dictionary, uh, value equals dictionary of key, um, and then do something with key and value. Uh, we might, uh, but the dictionary object has an items method which returns uh, a sequence of the, of the key value pairs as tuples. And we can actually extract the key and the value from that tuple as part of the for loop. So we can use this same idea of multiple assignment where we uh, have kind of different variables that correspond to parts of a sequence. And in this case, each element that our loop is going over is a tuple with two things, and so we extract the first one into a variable called key and the second one into a variable called value. Uh, and so we're able to, to easily write a loop over, over keys and, and values. Uh, cool. Does this formatting work for any like sequence? If you have like for a comma b in say uh, a list of lists, would do the same thing? Yeah. So this this works uh, for kind of arbitrary structures in Python. So uh, if we have uh, say pairs uh, or maybe triples, and we have a triple with 3, 4, 5, and then a triple with 0, 9, 2, and then one with uh, 1, 6, 8. We could say for A, B, C, and triples, and get the first element of each tuple, second element, and third element in A, B, C um, as, we, as we loop through. Um, 
this can actually be sort of used to pull apart sequences inside of sequences. So if I change my dictionary to be the tuple uh, 110, 24, 3, 5, my original loop still works. My values are uh, these tuples. But I can say extract the value into an x, x and y. And now each second element of every key value tuple, I am further breaking apart into an, into an x and a y. And these can just be nested and nested and nested, so you can kind of uh, pull apart very uh, complex structures. And so I see before I was printing out the tuple, 1, 10, now I have 1 and 10 in these separate variables x and y. Other questions on this? Someone? Can we do this for like multiple lists? Or multiple uh, or two lists at the same time? Uh, so uh, let's say, um, yeah, so if we had uh, list A as uh, 2, 4, 6, and list B as 3, 5, 7, you're asking can we kind of li loop over list A and B at the same time? So one way to, to do this is to say for A, B, in, and then there's a built-in function in Python <laughs> called zip which takes two sequences and like a zipper is like bringing them like two sides of a zipper we're sort of bringing the two sequences together so that each pair of corresponding elements of our sequence um, are together in the sequence so if I list or I zip list A and list B together I will comment out some of this so that we can more easily see the relevant thing being printed. So if I zip these together, then kind of each uh, the f the the f first element in each list will be paired, the, the seconds will be paired, and and so on. Uh, so if I run this, I see that kind of I had a loop with two and three, then with four and five, then with six and seven. Um, if the lists are different lengths, uh, zip only goes through as many things are in the, uh, the, as are in the shorter one. Other questions? <coughs> All right. So that's this multiple assignment. <laughs> Our uh, next uh, Python feature uh, is <coughs> the idea of conditional expressions. So uh, if we, we might write code saying, uh, in fact, I think you have written code saying something like, if count uh, equals steps, then we set count to zero, otherwise count plus equals one. So if count is some number of steps, we're gonna uh, reset it to zero, otherwise keep counting it up. So maybe uh, um, this is part of some class where count and, and steps are defined as, as instance variables. Uh, Python lets us take this entire thing and put it into a single expression uh, that returns a single value. And what I mean is we could say count equals, it's going to be zero if count equals steps, otherwise it will equal count plus one. So now I have not written a kind of if statement that goes in two different branches, I've written an expression that this thing on the right-hand side of the equals will either be zero if this condition is true, otherwise this thing to the right of the equals will be count plus one. 
Call. Why can you just do count plus one instead of count plus equals one? Uh, you mean why is this count plus one and why is this count plus equals one? Yeah. Uh, so this line uh, is just short. So so this line is short for count equals count plus one. Um, and I already have the count equals over here. And what I'm putting to the right of the equal sign is what I'm going to assign to count. Um, and so what I'm going to assign to count is the value count plus one, uh, whereas count plus equals one is not, doesn't kind of return a value to me, whereas I, this thing to the right of equals needs to return a value because it's what I'm going to assign to count. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yeah, and this can, uh, as we'll see, this uh, idea of, of conditional expressions can be used in in uh, in interesting ways. When we get to our our next uh, our next feature, uh, which is something called list comprehensions, uh, and so if uh, uh, we might think to generate uh, a list of random numbers, I would import random. Uh, I would say uh, for i in range 100, I would say my random nums is an empty list. And then inside the loop, I would say random nums dot append random dot random. And append 100 random numbers between 0 and 1. So I'd end up with my list. A list comprehension is of the form inside, say, our brackets. We have the value of each element, and then for a loop variable in sequence. We can have this part of a single expression inside square brackets that's going to generate a list. So I could have said random nums equals we want random dot random as the value for each element and we want one of those for i in range 100. So this is going to generate a list of 100 random numbers uh, and in practice, this approach is often uh, faster than the one where we're appending one at a time because writing it this way, Python knows that the resulting list is going to have 100 things rather than we create an empty list and we one by one add things to it. So. Uh, Python can be a bit more efficient when it comes to, to this style. Um, we can also uh, we can print our random nums. Check that this works. All right, we have uh, a list of, of a bunch of numbers. Um, we can... Uh, also uh, uh, use this to uh, uh, use the, the kind of conditional expressions that we were looking at previously as part of this list uh, list comprehension. So um, we could say for i in range 100 if i mod 2 is 0. And so this will now only produce an element in our list when this condition is true. So now instead of a list of 100 things, we'll actually just get a list of 50 things. Because only half of the time will I be an even number. So um, uh, a kind of more, more interesting application of this uh, might be 
uh, to uh, if we had a string and we wanted to produce a new string where uh, uh, vowels were capitalized, let's say. So we might uh, have, uh, do a loop through each character of the string, uh, have an if statement that checks is this character a vowel? If it is, appends the capitalized version, otherwise uh, concatenate the, the, uh, the, the letter as it is. Um, but we can instead uh, say um, uh, uh, something like, uh, C dot uh, capitalize uh, uh, give us the capitalized character if C is in A E I O U else just give us C for each C in S. So I am kind of if C is in the vowels, I'm going to produce the capitalized C, otherwise uh, uh, C unchanged for each character in my string S. So I can print my, my new S. Uh, it's not capitalized. Oh, I misspelled it. So I see that, that the E and O's are, are capitalized, and if I wanted to combine this back into a string, I could use the uh, join uh, string method that we saw in the fixing hangman uh, lab uh, and get back uh, uh, more, uh, more avant-garde. Hello there. <coughs> Questions on that? And to kind of bring this uh, together with the uh, kind of conditional expression that's affecting kind of which uh, things are included in our in our final sequence, um, uh, we could say uh, for each character in new S, uh, only include it in this resulting list if C. Uh, is uppercase. So uh, we can have this if kind of following our uh, sequence, which filters out things from the sequence to, uh, to only include some of them, or our expression for what element goes in the sequence can use one of these conditional expressions. Um, and is oh, there's no underscore and so we can uh, use this to, to filter things out in in the resulting sequences all right that is my grab bag of python features for you today uh, so uh, I'd like to uh, use the rest of this as final project work time. So Dominic and I will be wandering around to answer any any questions or, or issues you're uh, having as you start as you're starting on your final project.